David Jesse stars in The Diplomat on Netflix. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. David, your character plays, uh, you play, uh, the British Foreign Secretary on the series. How much did you know about that real office um, in British politics before you took on the role? Uh, not as much as I thought, actually. Um, uh, I obviously knew of the position um, and I knew that it was important, but I didn't know quite the levels of its importance and then the intricacies of um, of how it works. One, one of the things that Deborah had said to me was, you wait till you see the Foreign Secretary's office. It is like four times the size of the PM's office, which seems mad. But then she pointed out that if you think about when these offices were really kind of embedded and established, you're talking of a time where Britain had the empire and the colonial times and the powers that that be and these different countries that Britain was involved with, that office had to be had to be that big, needed to be that big. It was a busy, busy place. So um, that was kind of a good way in to learning of the, the position and the power of, of that, that position in office. Yeah, it's so interesting. And we see a lot of great uh, work and humor, actually, with the size of the office in later episodes. It's a lot It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I want to ask you about your character, Denison, because mm -hmm. he's so shrewd um, and very ambitious. What about him when you first read the script or when Deborah approached you about the role? What really appealed to you about playing this character and what leapt off the page for you? You know, David, when I, f when I first got into the business, I was offered different roles and I felt like a lot of the roles that I was offered didn't reflect men that I aspired to be and men that I knew in my family, my uncles, my fathers, my, my father, my, my brother. I felt like, so I had to really like search for roles where I felt offered something that if I was looking at, I, I would look up to that person or aspire to or, or want to know more about that person. Um, so that was however many years back when I got in, um, when I got into the business. So then when Denison came along, we hadn't had a British foreign secretary that had that was a person of color that looked like me at that point. Since then, we've had one. I think he's probably lasted the shortest amount of time ever, but we we did, we, we've had one. Um, so that appealed to me. And then when I got into that and the nuance of that, being a person of color in that position for the Tory party, um, I found that interesting because naturally myself and my family's politics don't necessarily align. We're all individuals, but I wouldn't say the majority of us necessarily align with the Tory government. Um, and that can be the case for a lot of people of colour. So I found that to be an interesting world to explore. How do you be a foreign secretary in a government where let's say for example there's one there's one um pitch of welcome open your homes for ukrainian refugees and then other refugees who perhaps look more similar to me when i put you on a plane to rwanda and if you are a person of color in that position how do you stand there and give that give that a, a, advertise that policy that's an interesting space for me to look at yeah i absolutely love the complexity of the role and all the nuance you're bringing out right now no, what thanks. kind of prep work obviously you know you, you have lived experience um as you know um growing up in england um you know this as you're talking about your family and their own political kind of history what kind of prep did you have to do not just to step into Denison's shoes, but to really kind of learn the language of diplomacy and international relations, because the series uh, grapples with some really complex, you know, um, political 
and international crises. So what kind of prep did it take for you to really feel comfortable, you know, speaking that language? Yeah. Uh, well, speaking to Deborah Khan really helped, um, really helped. So smart. If you ever get the chance, you probably did on this. Let's do it. It's it's really interesting. Um, she had said she had said to me that um, that you she has to believe and actually does believe in truth that there are good Republicans and bad Republicans and there are good Democrats and bad Democrats. And sometimes in both parties, sometimes the leadership will lean the party or lead it in a way that looks like it's actually heading off a cliff. And there are some people at that point that decide to jump out of the ship and hold a placard, which is very noble to say, you know, whistleblowing and calling out is absolutely important. Then there are other heroes, unsung heroes who stay in and try to steer us back to something that is both helpful, beneficial um, for us as a society. And so that was a good place to start. I think I also in the morning, I, I, use, I have a bit of a routine in the morning. I wake up, I have some quiet time. I read something, I meditate, I pray, I then We'll have a little uh, little look at the news, flick through, find out what's going on, do some exercise, and then I'm ready for the day. I found when I was doing this job that my news time doubled because, uh, so I had to get up a bit earlier because I would read the same news art, the same articles from the, the, the same outlets that I'd usually read from. But I found that I, in order to do this job well, I needed to read from one and then read, which may have had a sort of left-leaning stance and then read from a, uh, the same article, but from a right-leaning outlet. Um, and I think that that helped me develop an understanding and a perspective. And sometimes I would understand and think, okay, I see why that has to be that way, but I don't necessarily like it. Or I might feel like I, I now need to have a wash. <laughs> for like, but, um, but then also sometimes um, I just understand it and I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand where, where we're heading. So there was that. And then the other the other thing I did was I went and interviewed some people that worked with the government, some people that were in the government, and I found it helpful to interview a person of color that wasn't in the current government, but was on the other side, because I felt like that particular MP's politics are more akin to Denison's. It's just that Denison is in this party. So I try to imagine that politician in this in the current Tory government he's a Labour politician but I tried to imagine him in there um, and he threw up some some fascinating fascinating stuff really yeah yeah I have to imagine that sounds like an incredible prep experience and mm. you obviously bring so much of that to the role Thanks. let's talk about your central relationship in the series with um, Kerry Russell's character Kate mm the new American diplomat. Um, mm. What do you think his very first impression, Denison's very first impression of her is? Because obviously she makes a kind of um, abrupt and maybe even, you know, uh, to the new culture's standards, rude entrance, you know, yeah. kind of very brash uh, first impression on Denison. But how do you think Denison feels about her, you know, when he first meets her and right from the jump? So I think you've probably said a couple of the words that Denison feels about her. Um, I think there is a slight annoyance there as well. Um, you know, Deborah was saying there is always like 13 things to sign and answers and emails and meetings that you need to be at to keep this world turning. They're always happening, always happening, always happening. And in kind of swans this energy of like 
that lacks tact, that lacks um, subtlety, that's just bold and brash. Um, so I think that's his first impression. But what he didn't count for was that that bold and brashness and lack of tact is actually driven by a passion to do what's right and to save the world and to save save the world to save yeah to save the situation that they the, the potential situations that they can find themselves in and that is where i think there's this kind of connection and this almost like kindred spirit on that level of like okay i think that's where dennison thinks that's interesting because that that feels new and that and and then you start to see the smartness and the levels and the quickness. And actually, I think Denison is obvious, is is um, not obvious, is almost certainly most of the time the smartest person in the room. And then this whirlwind happens and he's like, oh, I'm behind her a step or a beat. And that's, that's new and that's interesting because I think everything that Denison's learned up until this point is schooling, what success looks like, doesn't look like um, Kate Weiler, you know. It usually looks like, uh, you know, white middle class middle aged man, and in steps this, which is interesting. Yeah, I absolutely love the trajectory that the two characters go on, as you say, as they learn more about each other and come to really respect and admire what each brings to their their roles. Mm -hmm. um, just talk about navigating that relationship with Carrie, because I think the relationship between the two of them is one that changes the most over the, the kind of arc of the eight episodes. So just talk about reading that on the page and then learning with Carrie how to, you know, portray that uh, on screen. Mm. I think, um, well, one of the things that was quite interesting about what this politician had said to me that I met was how careful he as a person of color has to be if he has true ambition to go on and change the world, which he does, and the people that he looks up to and how, how above reproach those people are. He was like, I'm talking about serious, serious politicians. He said like my friend Obama, he sort of name dropped that. Uh, Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell. He was like, these, these cats, they're unblemished. And that was, that was so interesting to me because he was saying as a, as a person of color, a lot of the time there's a, an eruption of, there's people blow up because the slightest, I mean, could you imagine if Obama had children with other women be nowhere near the White House that's the reality of, of of where we are so Denison is someone who has that ambition he wants to change the world he wants to be a player wants to be a historical figure so what does one do then when you start to connect with someone in the workspace um, so navigating that is quite interesting and quite intriguing. Um, I think in terms of working with Kerry, I, I, I found her to be so generous and um, amenable uh, that the, the sense of play was just, and fun, it was, um, it was, it didn't feel like uh, work. It felt like a, a joy to go in and and explore that. And I think when you have someone that is that knows their stuff and is on it and is willing to play, that just leaves room for all sorts of lovely kind of nuances and things to go and go and discover together. Yeah, that really comes across on screen. Watching the two of you work together is oh. so delightful for the audience. Um, so it's really exciting. Uh, I want to pick up on something you were just saying about Dennis's ambition. 
Yeah. Um, because we learn in a later episode, this is a light teaser if you haven't seen mm. seen the whole season yet, but we learn that he made a bit of a sacrifice uh, on behalf of his sister. Mm. Um, we won't go into what exactly you know the details are, but just talk about when you read that, um, what does that tell you about Dennison that maybe you didn't know about him before you got to that moment in the season? And what other backstory did you kind of fill in for yourself about you know where Dennison comes from? what his childhood and, you know, early career were like, mm. um, w w what did you fill in for yourself? So, well, what I learned about Denison was, I, I suppose, a bit like what Deborah, what I started off saying with Deborah, you know, that there is a point where he jumps ship and says, I'll, I'll, I will be the placard holding dude. And that was interesting that for him, that was family. And I think how that ties into where I thought that Denison was coming from, because at first when I read him and I heard that he was a Tory foreign minister, the people that I, would, I was looking at that tend to get in that position in the Tory party tend to have gone to certain schools and tend to or um, have similar upbringings to a lot of their peers and colleagues. And so I was starting to think on that that trajectory and Deborah said to me what would it be like if he went to a school like you went to what what sort of person would that create and so and so I started to think about that you know the son of immigrants that worked three jobs to send myself and my brother to a good school um that had all sorts of financial upheaval and difficulty and all of that just to, to be someone that's seen that and been in those kind of two worlds, really, you know, schooling in a world of privilege, but seeing the the work behind that. So not really living off of generations of wealth. So them being someone that knows that this world is existing and operating and now is in a position where decisions he makes here directly affect down here and sometimes the decisions that are made here are out of his control and he has to go along with knowing they affect down here um that i guess is probably then some of the turmoil that you see in denison when he's just having a scene about why we might not wish to do that mr prime minister and why we might wish to do this because there's a direct link to it so um I think that that's, yeah. So does that answer your question? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, David, just briefly, I want to ask you about some of the, lo the locations that you were able to shoot in for this series. Oh. I mean, the country houses are incredible, as is, you know, the, the season finale, we get to go to Paris. Mm -hmm. um, just talk about very briefly what that was like for you as an actor to shoot in these historic sites and in these just truly magnificent places. Oh. Well, there's the kind of, on the really minutia micro level, some of the places were very near where I lived. So I got to be in my own bed <laughs> at night, which was wonderful. But then also it was quite interesting for us as a family for, because a lot of the work I've done over the past, maybe, maybe 10 years has filmed away. So I'd gotten into a rhythm of being able to, I, probably picked out I get quite involved with my characters so I'd be able to be kind of fully in that and be facetiming home uh for an hour in the morning an hour in the evening and then I could be fully immersed in my work whereas here there was a more of a nine to five but then all of this work to cram into that so we had to figure that out um so that's the minutia micro level but then on the slightly wider level to actually be walking past a lot of these buildings for all of my life and now get to go in them and sit in them was super interesting there's a bit you know there's a there's a scene right in the in the opening episode where i think is where you meet denison's character and that picture is real <laughs> that picture that depicts america as this glorious woman of justice and britain as this glorious woman and Australia's naked with a bush hat and Africa as a little boy with fruit. Africa, a whole continent, 
as a little boy with fruit on his head, naked. Wow, still up there. Still walking past that every day. And then we're surprised when we hear of some of the ramifications of decisions that are made and overlooked. That's quite revealing when you go in there and, 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 and see that to the Cotswolds, to the breath of air and the greenery and the lavish buildings. And then go in one room and there's a little statue of a little African boy. <laughs> You're like, what, what is happening, right? And then the Louvre and the grandness of that, it's beautiful. And, you know, without looking too deeply in the artwork, where did we get that artwork from? So all of that constantly going on, but it was helpful to play Denison in those spaces. Um, so wonderment and it was just constantly like that, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely incredible. Um, David, Jesse, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on The Diplomat. Um, and thanks for talking to Gold Derby today. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm.